We work with the news, business, entertainment, faith leaders, sports, governments, and individual activists from around the globe to ensure and educate public people on LGBTQ issues and move policy forward. Now on this channel, I've made mention of the gay agenda several times and how it relates specifically to music and the entertainment industry. How they're using these major platforms to push what is known to be the gay agenda. I have since heard a lot of people speak about the gay agenda, but no one clearly defines what this agenda is and what its objectives are. First and foremost, I want you guys to be aware of the objectives. The two primary objectives are number one, to emasculate men for control to create a separation in the household. If you're able to emasculate men, the number one quote unquote leaders, the strong figures in our society, that society will be now easier to control, which is why their aim is to emasculate them. Take away that sense of masculinity, take away that sense of freedom and independence, that drive that makes a man want to achieve something so we can control them. Secondly, create a separation in the family dynamic. It is no longer a man and a woman having children. It is now a man and a man adopting children or raising a bunch of they thems, not identifying as a binary gender. In this video right here, we have a politician literally breaking down the process in which they are aiming to achieve those objectives. Today, I'm really proud to sit on WEF's Power of Media Task Force, and GLAAD is a very proud partner of the Partnership for Global LGBTQI Equality, which is also known as PGLE. And PGLE was launched right here in 2019 and is a project of WEF and the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. We work with the news, business, entertainment, faith leaders, sports, governments, and individual activists from around the globe to ensure and educate public people on LGBTQ issues and move policy forward. In the US, the Gallup poll this year showed that over 20% of Gen Z are LGBT. Now, what I want you guys to focus on in this video in particular is how she mentions that these two organizations, GLAAD and the PGE, I believe it was, are working closely with news, sports, government, businesses, independent activists. They're working in allegiance with all of these different aspects of our societies to continue. And what she says is educate, but it really means to promote what the ideology of the LGBTQ community is. Now, I want to break down how heavily influenced each industry that she actually mentioned in this video is being impacted with the LGBTQ movement. First and foremost, she said the news. Now, when we think about news, we think about blogs, we think about websites, we think about magazines, we think about other outlets like this right here. We have this interview right here with President Joe Biden and Dylan Mulvaney, the transgender person who was the face of that Bud Light campaign that got all of the backlash. But this entire conversation was around transgenders gaining more rights. And one of the parts that was very disturbing of this interview in particular was how Joe Biden said that he was an advocate of people who were quote unquote identifying as non-binary or transgender being able to go into the bathroom of the opposite sex because that's the way that they feel, which is a very slippery slope. That you should have every single solitary right, including use of your gender identity bathrooms in public. But this right here is a perfect example of how it's being promoted in the news. Secondly, she mentioned business. I want you guys to think of the most recent campaigns that have been going viral, which include the Adidas campaign, the Target campaign, and the Bud Light campaign. All three of those campaigns have gotten major backlash for having transgender as the face of their campaign. Literally having t-shirts that say busy thinking about girls for little girls bathing suits that don't appropriately fit women because they have a bulge socket but listed under the woman category on Adidas and a beer company whose main demographic are older men having a transgender be the face of that campaign. And I found this video right here that explains why all of these major companies are participating so heavily 
on the fight for the LGBTQ to gain their rights, okay? So let's check this out. Target doesn't care if you boycott their stores. They're not afraid of you. They're scared of a much bigger threat. Let me explain. Target's largest shareholders are Vanguard, State Street, and BlackRock. These corporations support the Corporate Equality Index, or CEI. This is a rating system for how much American businesses support the LGBT community. If Target's CEO does not support the LGBT community well, then he's not going to be reelected by the shareholders. So sometimes corporations like Target push LGBT marketing campaigns, not because they particularly want to or it's good for profits, they do it for a high CEI score. So they face a backlash, maybe they lose a little money. Failing to get a high CEI is way more scary. So now corporations are literally being incentivized by federal law to continue promoting the LGBTQ agenda. Now the next thing that she mentioned, and this is something that we speak about on this channel a lot, is the entertainment and music industry. Okay, and that right there is very, very self-explanatory. We have had an abundance of artists exposed and coming out of the closet as gay or being open about their pride. We have people like Lil Uzi. We have people clearly like Lil Nas X, Jaden Smith. All of these individuals who are claiming their allegiance and full support with the LGBTQ ideology. Now, let me just get this straight. I want you guys to be aware that there is nothing wrong morally with being gay in my opinion. This is not an attack on the LGBTQ community at all. This is literally to help people realize that there is an agenda, that the LGBTQ ideology is being pushed. It is not being championed for rights, for equal rights. It is literally being something that is implemented to brainwash our community, which is why a lot of these campaigns are targeting the younger audience, okay? Now, the fourth thing that she mentioned was working with faith leaders. And the first thing that came to mind was the Pope, bro. One of the biggest religious figures known to our entire society is the Pope. And I want you guys to listen to what he had to say in this video. Somos todos hijos de Dios. Y Dios nos quiere como estamos y con la fuerza que luchamos cada uno por nuestra dignidad. El ser homosexual no es un delito. No es un delito. Sí, pero es pecado. Bueno, primero, distingamos pecado por delito. Pero también es pecado la falta de caridad con el prójimo. ¿Y vos cómo andás? ¿Eh? Cada hombre y cada mujer tiene que tener una ventana en su vida donde pueda volcar su esperanza y donde pueda ver la dignidad de Dios. Y ser homosexual no es un delito. Es una... So he said several times in this interview right here that being a homosexual is not a crime, it is a human condition. But he also mentions, yes, being gay is a sin. Now, what I find very contradictory is the fact that he is the Pope. You are supposed to be the number one advocate for the word of God. You're telling me that it's okay as the Pope to marry two gay men or two gay lesbian women. Is that okay? Anyone who is a religious figure says that it's okay to marry a gay man and a gay woman under the word of God is a complete fraud because in the Bible, it has clear scriptures that speak directly against that. It's almost as if you're consciously choosing to sin. It's almost as if you're consciously choosing as a pastor to go against the word of God. Therefore, your title as a pastor, as a preacher, as a priest has absolutely no legitimacy at all to the church, bro. Now for a man and a man to get married under state law is something completely different for a man and a man to get married under church law. And this right here is a representation of just how tightly the gay agenda has their hand around so many things. They are able to force the Pope, an advocate of the word of God, someone who reads the scriptures and understands that it is a sin to now fight and defend gay or lesbian or bisexual interactions. Now, the next thing that Sarah K. Ellis mentioned was sports participation in teaching about the LGBTQ ideology, okay? And we have two main examples, which is this individual right here, Alana McCullen, who was previously a man and transitioned into a woman and ended up fighting in an MMA fight in which she completely obliterated her opponent, bro. Like, there's absolutely, like, this is a man. Like, there's absolutely nothing, that, no amount of hormones that you can take. There's no amount of transitioning that you can use to change physical and biological makeup. Like you can't change bone density. You can't change hand size. You can't change jaw structure. You can't change the frame of your skull or your hips. You can't change these things no matter how many hormones you take, which is why it's completely unfair 
for this to be accepted into sports like especially MMA where it's a where it's a competition of strength. This is another example in which a man who was once ranked 462 in the men's swimming league ended up being ranked number one in the women's swimming league, bro. In the women's swimming league. Now, this is completely unfair. You can ask almost any female athlete, any athlete who is a woman, an actual woman, whether this is fair or not, and 99% of them will say that this is unfair. That 1% is either speaking out of pride, saying that I can take on any man, or number two, just trying to be politically correct so they don't offend the LGBTQ community. Anybody who is logical and based will know that this is not fair at all, especially having a grown man, a person with a penis changing in a locker room full of women. But we were not forewarned in any capacity that we would be sharing a locker room. It's a process to which, of course, you have to be undressed. All of a sudden, it got dead silent. I turn around. I mean, this person's towering over every other person in the locker room, drops the clothes, full male, like a fully intact male with male genitalia. And almost subconsciously, you just cover. Just because he identifies as a woman, it's okay, according to society. And this right here is another example of how the LGBTQ, the gay agenda, is being pushed into society. Now, the last thing that Sarah, who was speaking at the World Economic Forum, discussed was governments, which we saw earlier with Joe Biden speaking to Dylan, and individual activists. And the first thing that came to mind was a video that I actually did. And if you want to, you can literally just type in Nitrous TV BLM and I should pop up. It was an entire video that discussed what the BLM, the Black Lives Matter movement, actually was spending their money on. And it's shocking to see that a large portion of their donations was going to transgender communities. Not, not advocation against police brutality, not building black communities or black schools. A lot of the contribution that they earned through donations or even government funding, because a lot of politicians put their money into BLM to support the movement, and yet and still, that was going to a lot of transgender and LGBTQ programs and communities. But let's take a look at this video so you guys can see the details of that entire scandal, bro. Also suspicious is the fact that Black Lives Matter designated a whopping $8 million to an out-of-country grant. Interesting. What? I thought this charity was about addressing police brutality in the United States. Apparently to do that, you need to send $8 million to Toronto, Canada, to an organization named M4BJ. They purchased a $6.3 million, 10,000 square foot downtown property in Toronto. And I should also mention that M4BJ is run by Patrice's wife, Janaya Khan, because it is. She is the co-founder, believe it or not. And here's where it gets really interesting. Janaya Khan is gender non-conforming. These terms can be quite sensitive. So let me just use photos to illustrate my point. Janaya used to look like this, and now she looks like this. Now that information would be entirely irrelevant if it wasn't for the way that Patrice Cullors saw it fit to spend the rest of Black Lives Matter's money. That's crazy. Ready for some BLM pride? Well, according to their IRS form, $200,000 went to the Transgender Justice Funding Project. Another $200,000 went to the Transgender United Fund. Another $200,000 went to the Transgender Law Center. Another $200,000 went to Black Transgendered Media. Another $200,000 went to the Transgendered Variant and Intersex Justice Project. Another 200K went to the transgendered district. By the way, if you're wondering what that is, it's purportedly going to be the all transgender district. And I guess that's really, really important for black America advancement in society, I guess, or whatever. Another 200K went to the St. James Infirmary. The organization, by the way, is for, according to their website, it's run by sex workers and is for them. Specifically, escorts, BDSM workers, strippers, peep show workers, Crazy. phone sex operators, and webcam performers. It was actually the St. James Infirmary that created the transgendered district. So that's just an organization within an or another organization, which by the way, you see a lot of when you go through these documents. So yeah, 
going to be apparently great big things involving sex workers in the future for black America. In continuation, the Center for Halstead received $200,000 from Black Lives Matter. They are Chicago's community center dedicated to securing the health and well being of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, and queer people of Chicago. Similarly, we have the Audrey Lord Project, which received $200,000. And according to their website, they are a lesbian, gay, bisexual, two spirit trans and gender non-conforming people of color community organizing center another four hundred thousand dollars went to transgender advocates knowledgeable empowering or take as it's known for shorts the founder of that organization is a transgendered individual by the name of Derenicia duncan boyd individual activists Let's continue. Derenicia is also the executive director of the Transgendered United Fund, which I mentioned earlier, which secured $200,000. So a total $600,000 of BLM money went to a transgendered woman named Derenicia Boyd, who is operating two charities. I found that piece to be interesting. very interesting. Here is Derenicia describing in a 2020 interview how they were able to use that money. Now the video continues, obviously, but the reason why I presented all of these different aspects to you guys, whether it be sports, entertainment, government, politics, the reason why I presented all of this to you is because I want you guys to see the force behind the gay agenda, how heavily ingrained it is becoming into our society. And I want you to be aware of the fact that it started off with one simple signature of Joe Biden, back to government, signing on the same-sex marriage bill now under the state hey that is perfectly fine if you guys want to go get married as gay couple do what you got to do under the church though it's a little bit contradictory to everything that that a relationship with the word of god actually stands for so it's influencing church it's influencing media it's influencing our government and politics it's influencing sports and it's even beginning to influence schools and cartoons for the younger generation We've had Netflix series, we've had cartoons, we've had, excuse me, several cartoon series. We've seen transgenders giving five and six year olds lap dances. We've seen transgenders giving lap dances to high school students. We've seen an entire compilation of how these transgenders and the gay agenda is actually attacking the youth, bro. They're grooming the youth to become a part of this agenda. For what? Like I said in the beginning, the objectives being to emasculate men, to create a controllable and malleable society, and number two, to create a separation in the household. And these are two things that we are seeing that is heavily visible in our society today, bro. Think about the level of divorce rate. Think about the level of teenagers who are trying to transition their sex. Think about the level of depression. I've seen so many ads and campaigns just to help people cope with depression cope with anxiety, cope with all of these secondary effects that a lot of people experience after they transition their sex. There are not many people who are 110% happy that they made that sex transition. I want you guys to be aware of that. A lot of people think that the sex change that these transgender people are fighting for is the end all be all. They don't always feel happy after. A lot of them regret their sex change. And a couple of them even questioned and were disappointed as to why they were able to get their sex change at such a young age. Now, this is not a video to speak poorly on people who are gay, who are lesbian, who are transgender. This is literally just a video to expose to you guys that there is an agenda behind it. All of these delusions that people are experiencing claiming that they're a man when they're a woman and being a woman when they're a man, all of these delusions are actually being implemented and stemmed and influenced by things that we saw in today's video, okay? So I'm in this video right here. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this topic. Let me catch you guys in the next one, man. Peace.